This will be an example using Laplace transforms to solve a second order constant coefficient ordinary differential equation. Uh, we have another video that solves this same problem using undetermined coefficients, and so this one will serve as a contrast to compare the two methods. Uh, so we have our constant coefficient, ODE, with a forcing, and we have our initial conditions. Uh, we first, to employ the method of Laplace transforms, need to recall what the Laplace transform does to each one of these terms. We're going to take the Laplace transform of both sides, and as a, as a reminder, the Laplace transform of a function f of t is the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus st f of t dt. And we introduce some notation to indicate the Laplace transform of, and we can do that uh, by indicating f hat of s. Uh, so this integral integrates over t. It leaves behind s as a parametric uh, uh, dependency of this integral. And so the resulting function, f hat, is a function of s. And this is how we would denote uh, Laplace transforms of, of functions. So the Laplace transform of x will be x hat of s. The Laplace transform of dx dt, we could look up on a table or remember from our class notes. is negative x at the value 0 plus s x hat of s. So this is s times the Laplace transform of x minus the value of x, not x hat, at the initial condition 0. So this is where the initial conditions come in to problems using Laplace transforms, is when we take the Laplace transform of derivatives. <clears throat> and the Laplace transform of the second derivative is negative dx dt evaluated at 0 minus x s times x evaluated at 0 plus s squared times the Laplace transform of x itself. So with this uh, reminder, we are ready to plug these things into that equation. If we take the Laplace transform of both sides, we'll get various terms uh, of this form in our derivatives. And then we'll have to take the Laplace transform of e to the minus t. And we'll be uh, in good shape to then solve the problem. So after that brief reminder of the method, uh, let's go ahead and do it. We'll get negative dx dt evaluated at 0. That's 0. So we don't get that term. Then we get a minus s times x evaluated at 0. And that's 1. So we get a minus s. Finally, we get a plus s squared x hat of s. This is all the second derivative term. Then we turn to the first derivative term. We'll get 2 times what's the Laplace transform of dx dt. It's negative x of 0 will be negative 1 in this case, plus s times the Laplace transform of x, plus x hat of s. That's the Laplace transform of the left-hand side. And what do we get on the right-hand side? From a table or from class notes, the Laplace transform of e to the minus t is 1 over s plus 1. So the goal now is to solve for x hat of s. We have three terms there. And if we collect them all, we get s squared plus 2s plus 1 x hat of s. And then everything else goes on to the other side equals 1 over s plus 1 <coughs> plus s plus 2. Note that this is the characteristic equation. We had to find roots of the characteristic equation when we did undetermined coefficients, and that's not going to change when we do Laplace transforms. Because the next step is to say that x hat of s equals 1 over s plus 1 times this uh, characteristic equation, which we then would need to factor when we do uh, partial fractions. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and encode it now and factor it now. This is, again, uh, s plus 1 quantity squared. So when I divide by s plus 1 quantity squared, I get here an s plus 1 cubed 
and then I get an s plus 2 over s plus 1 squared on my right hand side. So at this point, I have solved the problem in the Laplace variable s, and the only thing that remains is to transform it back into uh, the variable t. This piece is done. It's already fully uh, reduced in partial fraction form. I can't simplify it anymore. Uh, and I could look the, trans the inverse transform of this up on a table. However, this term I can simplify very slightly using partial fractions. So what would be the partial fraction form of that? It's a double root on the bottom, and so it would simplify into a constant over s plus 1 plus another constant over s plus 1 squared. And then I would multiply everything through by s plus 1 squared in order to set things equal to each other. I have s plus 2. When I multiply this by s plus 1 squared, I'll get a s plus 1. And when I multiply this by s plus 1 squared, I'll just get b. Uh, it's important to remember that this form here comes from the partial fractions theorem. It's something that has been proved. Uh, and we don't know what these constants are, but the theorem says it will have this form. After taking this result from the theorem, we then go through and we equate coefficients to figure out what a and b are. That's easily done here. We have a s plus a plus b must equal s plus 2. And that has the simple solution a equals b equals 1. So we're now ready to take the inverse Laplace transform. We have our 1 over s plus 1 cubed from before. And then this one we've simplified into 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 1 over s plus 1. And we simply need to take the inverse Laplace transform. And that's just simply done. We can look these up on the table and read them straight off the table. This one becomes 1 half t squared e to the minus t. This one becomes t e to the minus t. And this one becomes e to the minus t. The Laplace transform is a linear operator, and so we can simply go term by term looking these up on the table, and we get this solution uh, from that process. Note that we didn't have to solve any sort of initial condition. That all came out of the problem when we encoded the initial conditions into our original Laplace transform. We did not then at the end have to go through and solve a system of equations to, to, to satisfy the initial conditions. So this demonstrates those benefits of the Laplace transform. That the homogeneous solutions are found as a part of the process. The initial conditions are satisfied automatically as a part of the process. And the fact that the forcing is resonant uh, with multiplicity 2 in the roots of the characteristic equation is also satisfied. We didn't have to deal with any of those issues on our own. The Laplace transform took care of all of them automatically and gave us the correct solution.